Hendon, when you were able to lead the band, what was the process like? Did the band director bring a ladder out for you? What was the process like? Yeah, so I was walking over to um, you know, sing with my teammates after the win, and uh, the band director grabbed me and asked me if I wanted to direct Rocky Top. And I was like, oh yeah, for sure. Um, and then I was kind of kind of scared though, getting on the ladder with my cleats on. I was like, I hope I don't fall. So I was, I was being very careful, uh, you know, walking up the ladder and, and uh, standing there as well. I guess kind of piggybacking off of that, um, when you were up there conducting, I was on the other end with your parents and your dad was kind of mimicking the same thing, your mom getting a little teary eyed. So just kind of going through all of that, you're the first guy since Peyton to do it. Just what did it feel like when you really got to kind of soak that moment in? Mm -hmm. It was it was cool. Um, it's been something that, that I've admired uh, since the day I got here, just seeing pictures of, of Peyton being up there and seeing videos and also just kind of, um, Having that thought in my mind, like when we score, they strike the band up. So I always wanted to do like a little celebration of striking the band up when I scored. So just being up there was a, um, a honor and a blessing as well. Hendon, kind of moving forward to this game, night game on the road. You guys played just on the road two weeks ago at Georgia. What is your message to the offense mm -hmm. in terms of having a little better composure and poise on the road this time? What do you guys work on this week to handle that better? Um, Honestly, I, I feel like everyone on the offensive side of the ball is, is excited to go into this atmosphere. Um, we've seen what it was what it was like at, at Georgia, and uh, you know, moving forward, we knew what to expect. So, um, you know, anytime going into an environment like this, you want to prepare and you know do different things to get ready for that environment. So, crowd noise at practice um, is a thing, um, but really just going out and locking in and communicating at a high level is what we need to do. And then uh, Cooper was the fourth offensive lineman to be SEC lineman of the week. What specifically is he doing at a high level right now for you guys? Yeah, he's, he's being, um, you know, a great communicator from me in the in the back, uh, in the backfield, and then just the, the rest of the of the security um, up front. Um, just just being that force uh, up front is is huge for us. And then, um, you know, being on the same page that. That's a, a huge deal. Like if, if everyone isn't on the same page, then the play is, is dead. It starts with them. So um, just him bringing that energy every day and uh, positive vibes whenever we're at practice. He's always, you know, cracking a couple jokes, uh, keeping us uplifted, uh, you know, through the hard days of practice or camp. Um, you know, he's a great guy to work with. Hinton, I know it's early in the week, but what do you know about South Carolina's defense and what mm -hmm. they do well? Yeah, um, you know, they're, they're physical. Physical, they have great size on the back end. Um, up front, up front, they're they're very uh, athletic as well. Um, you know they like to run a lot of man, a lot of hands on things, uh, fly around to the ball and play with the hair on fire. So, um, you know, looking forward to Saturday. We can we could ask you about a lot of different stats, impressive stats that you have individually. But team wise, you guys are number one in the country in scoring. You're number one in the country in yards. What level of pride do you have in those team numbers? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's where all the pride is. Um, it's about the team. It's not about, you know, individual accolades. That'll come with, um, with the success of the team. Uh, so we're not really worried about about any individual accolades. Uh, very blessed to be able to, you know, go out there and do what we set our set uh, the goals up for ourselves earlier this season, and I'm being able to go and attack those goals by being the number one offense in those regards, yards and points. That's what we strive to do. We strive to get six out of every drive. And then you talk about it just being about the team, not the individual accolades. You are obviously very much in the Heisman conversation. Do you try to block that out? Do you try to, if anybody comes up to you and, and talks to you about it, you try to shut them down? Or how do you kind of approach that yeah. part of, mm -hmm. of the season for you? Yeah, I'm very appreciative of that. I'm very blessed to be in that situation. But I wouldn't be in any of that without my teammates and, and coaches um, and, su and support system. So um, really just concentrating on you know going one to know every week. Uh, when someone approaches me with it, I have the same answer. You know, we just want to win ball games. So, if any any accolade that comes with that is cool, but um, yeah, just making sure that we're winning ball games and um, continuing to build a brotherhood here at Tennessee is what uh, I'm focused on. Hendon, what, what was it like to guess uh, to get Dylan Sampson back into the lineup a little bit? And, and if you could go back to the LSU game, I know there was a the play where. He, the pass pro may not have gone the way he wanted and you kind of got lit up. Was there anything you, you said to him after that about, hey, like, 
let's make sure we don't do that again? Oh, no. He, um, Samp is, is uh, you know, really hard on himself as it is. So you don't have to really give him too many, too many words. Um, I give him a couple words of encouragement, you know, like, you get this ball, make sure you do your thing, which he always does. He never disappoints when he has a rock in his hands. From day one, getting here to, you know, grasping the offense at a, at a fast pace, um, you know, he's, he's a bright young guy, and I'm excited um, for his journey here at Tennessee. After the game, Jalen Hyatt said he didn't play his best game because of the drops. What are the conversations like with your wide receivers when they drop a ball? Mm -hmm. It's there, like I said, you know, same thing with, with the receivers um, as D Samp. They're extremely hard on themselves, um, as, and so am I. I feel like I haven't, you know, played my best ball this past game. Uh, we won. That was the, the ultimate goal, so that's good. But uh, we definitely have a lot of things to clean up. Um, Hyatt is extremely tough on himself, as the rest of the wide receivers. They pride themselves in, in not dropping balls. Um, so me just being there and being a good leader and just encouraging him, hey, you know, keep your head up. We still need you. Um, and, and him being able to respond, you know, with a big touchdown catch he had, um, you know, following those drops. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of him and the steps that he's made. And I uh, uh, can't wait to uh, get back out there with him on Saturday and get some more big plays. And then the staff has schemed up some plays this year, some nice play designs, a, a couple other, you know, from Saturday. Is there ever a moment before the, the snap where you, maybe it's the DP, the DB following in motion or whatever, that you know, all right, this play is going to go? Uh, sometimes, yeah, yeah. I, um, well, really, just from film study and preparation, um, I can I can tell when when the play is going to be a big play. Um, other times, sometimes it might be a you know a gray look, um, but then the, the picture will clear up and it's a huge play. So, um, you know, anytime just going through that process, just making sure my eyes are in the right place and going through the same process that we talked about in the meeting room to practice and translating that to game time. And then as a leader, you probably have the best gauge of this than, uh, as anyone. The guys that aren't getting a lot of playing time right now, mm -hmm. how engaged and prepared are they just mm -hmm. in case they do get an opportunity? Yeah, extremely engaged. Um, We've done a great job of continuing to communicate throughout uh, position rooms. Uh, the, the leader of that room is communicating and making sure that everyone's on the same page, uh, whether they're in or if they're on the sideline watching, watching the guy behind them uh, play. And that's something that we've pride ourselves in from the beginning of last January, you know, just being um, very efficient in our communication and very efficient in our preparation as well. We, we believe that the preparation and the work you put in, you know, will show on Saturday. So if you're not doing what you need to do off the field or on the field, then when game time comes, you're not going to be ready. And with, with Jalen Hyatt, he's from Columbia, that area, played in that stadium in high school. They didn't recruit him. Do you think he has this game circled going into this week? Yeah, for sure. Um, Jay Hyatt, you know, anytime you go home to play, it's a, it's a, a great feeling. Um, and Jay Hyatt plays with a chip on his shoulder week in, week out. Uh, his competitive fire is, is amazing. Uh, I just want to match it, you know, whenever, whenever we're out there together. And you can see that intensity that he plays with, you know, when he catches the ball. He's he playing very physical right now, playing very smart and savvy. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a cool thing to go home to your hometown and have family and friends there and put on a show. So I'm excited to see uh, Hyatt do his thing. Um, obviously, pocket integrity is key in the game. You stayed relatively clean last week. What's been the preparation, the work like to make sure that it's not like the Georgia week and you are able to still have that strong pocket and get downfield? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it starts with, with the security up front, um, my old lineman and, and my running back. And, uh, you know, like we were talking about earlier with Coop, that communication factor, making sure that everyone's on the same page, making sure, you know, we want to slide this way or that way. If I see a blitz, make sure we're audible um, so that we can get picked up. Um, but, you know, just making it an emphasis that we concentrate on communication and having that throughout the whole game um, and, and preparation um, starts, it starts with preparation to have uh, efficient communication. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of big plays in this offense. Everybody talks about what you do out wide. What is, what is Princeton Fant? meant to this offense this year, the growth of it in mm -hmm. year two, and how important is the tight end position to this system? Yeah, you know, um, they're, they're the Swiss Army knife. Uh, they, they do it all. They catch it, get handoffs. You know, they're blocking. Um, they're really the missing piece of the, of the offense, and that's what they pride themselves in. 
um, coming coming in with a great attitude, making sure that they're playing physical and being that missing piece. So P and, um, and, and Jake Warren just being great leaders in that room as well. They got a lot of young guys in there. Them being great leaders and coming with great attitudes every day, working hard and and making sure that they're perfecting their game. They make sure that they come in and get extra film, extra balls on the, on the jugs, and then they're playing special teams as well. Um, so, you know, really just them being everything that we need, wearing a lot of hats. Yes, sir. Thank y'all.